Morning, another day, another real test. Today, we're doing it on the Pixel 6, not the Pro, the Amateur. And uh, if you're not familiar, I'm gonna use this phone throughout my day, my SIM card's even in it. We'll also take some photos on it, some of its competitors, put that up on the screen so you can see how it does. We'll check in on the battery, we'll let's talk about some features that I like and don't like, all while exploring somewhere. But, first things first. <laughs> Funny, we talked about that in the last Pixel video. Coffee, check. This is Irving Farm Coffee Roasters, and it's a cute little coffee shop that I'm actually very happy made it through the pandemic. One of those ones where you like step down into it, and inside it just kind of feels like an old school like writer's den. I don't know how else to explain that. It's just very cozy. It feels like it was probably somebody's house at one point and it's been converted into this. And of course, they make a good latte. While we're here though, let's talk about the styling on this phone. And I apologize to anyone who's watched my Pixel 6 Pro video, which I'll leave a link below if you haven't, but apologize to those people who watch that because there's gonna be some overlap here too. Now personally, I love the new design of the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro even. I think Google needed to come up with something more recognizable design-wise and their design team even mentioned the camera bar now drawing focus to a feature they've always been known for. I even think it's clever the way it makes the device recognizable not just from afar, but even in like icon form, similar to how the newer iPhones and even these new MacBooks do from the front. It's one of the reasons I think they have notches. Actually. Now the Pixel 6 has a similar glass back to the Pixel 6 Pro with two-tone colors to choose from, but the frame itself is now a matte finish instead of the polished one that we have on the 6 Pro. And we also have a flat screen on the front of this one, whereas it's curved on the Pro. Now between the two design-wise, I, I kind of like them both. I don't know which one I like more. This one feels a little bit better in hand maybe. By the way, they both feel more premium than any Pixels in the past in every single way. So it's definitely an upgrade in my opinion as far as design is concerned. Now if you want to protect that design though, may I suggest today's sponsor, Rhino Shield. Rhino Shield makes cases that aren't just extremely impact protective, they also look good too. Personally I like that they're thin and they're not bulky. They have their solid suit line that is their no fuss protective case that comes in a ton of designs, colors, and finishes. But they also have their modular Mod NX cases for iPhones which allow you to mix and match a backplate with various case rim colors, but also swap out the backplate for a bumper case if that's more your style. For the Pixel they have their classic solid suit, but with a twist. Interchangeable power button colors, so you can get that patented Pixel accent color back if you want. They also have new cases featuring Snoopy and work from artist Keith Herring plus a ton of others. And you can even design your own case with your own images and text. They have cases for all the new iPhones as well as many flagship Android phones too. They also ship worldwide and have free shipping for qualified orders as well as a lifetime warranty for their cases. Head to the link in the description below to check out their cases and use discount code UNLOCKER6 for an extra 10% off on top of their Black Friday deals that are going on right now that are up to 60% off already on all of their products. All right, and eagle-eyed viewers might notice I'm wearing a different coat. I went right back inside as soon as I went out and got a much heavier one because apparently, even though it's supposed to be fall right now, it very much feels like winter today. So this neighborhood we're in is called Gramercy, where the coffee shop is, but it's named for this park, which is Gramercy. Park, um, and it's actually a private park and it was one of the first urban planning that happened in this country. Basically, the buildings surrounding this all get access to a key that allows them in the park. It is a private park. It's crazy. And this is Madison Square Park. It's not private, it's a public park. And it's in the Flatiron District, which gets its name from the Flatiron Building right outside the park. And it's getting a facelift right now, hence all of the scaffolding, but there's a good chance that you've seen the Flatiron Building before in a photo, as it's one of the most photographed buildings in the United States. It was once even the tallest building in the city at 20 stories tall when it was built in 1902. It was originally called the Fuller Building, named for the owner of the Fuller Company that was to use it originally as their headquarters. But locals always called it the Flatiron Building since the beginning, thanks to its shape being reminiscent of a cast iron clothes iron at the time, and eventually 
That just became the official name. And while we're here though, let's talk about the screen. We have a 6.4 inch 90 Hertz FHD plus display versus the 6.7 120 Hertz QHD plus display of the Pro. Now they both have higher refresh screens, which means things like scrolling, animations, and games. Look smoother on both the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. The Pro just has a slightly higher refresh rate, but honestly, unless you're playing a game, I don't think you're gonna really notice very much. And regardless, they're both gonna feel snappier than your average like 60 Hertz panel. They're both AMOLED panels, by the way, and they look great actually with both having enough brightness for me to see them out in broad daylight, which is what I really care about. Now we also have an in-display fingerprint sensor that is snappy enough. And while I miss the Pixel's patented rear one, which I loved because of its placement, but also I used to use it to pull down notifications without touching the screen, I'll survive. And lastly, the screen is covered in Gorilla Glass Victus on both models, and so it should resist scratches as well as be more shatter resistant than Gorilla Glass 6, at least according to Corning, the manufacturer. The little huts are back. We had these last year. They like heat them so that you can still eat outside. I'm not mad at it, cause like they're great, but it means, it means it's winter and that makes me sad. And this is Fotografiska. It's a Museum of Photography that opened this New York location in December of 2019, right before the pandemic hit. But it is alive and well, and I've been wanting to check it out. They have rotating exhibits, including one right now curated by Sarah Moon, a fashion photographer who has been known for creating very otherworldly shots in a storybook-esque visual style. And they also have an Andy Warhol exhibit that is a collection of 120 images that includes some of his famous Polaroid portraits, but also these photos that he apparently sewed together, which I didn't know he even did. Frankly, it's a good place to explore when it's this cold out and also seems like an appropriate place to talk about the cameras on this phone. So the cameras have always been a big deal on the Pixel phones. And even though the hardware for that camera hasn't really changed in years, the software managed to keep the Pixel phones as some of the best phones for still photography. The Pixel 6 and 6 Pro are now the first Pixels to actually upgrade the camera sensors. And while we were worried if Google would be able to use their software magic to get as good of photos out of the new sensor, it's pretty clear at this point that they're having no problem doing so. Now the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro both have the same main camera that is a 50 megapixel f1.85 aperture 1 by 1.31 inch sensor that since the pixels are binned together by default gives you 2.4 micron sized pixels. And all of that means it can let in a lot more light and produce much better images even without night mode, which the previous generations of pixels had to use when there wasn't a lot of light or basically the limitations of that smaller sensor showed in the very noisy images that it produced. To put this into perspective, converting the fraction number usually used for sensor size to something easier to compare, we get a 0.763 inch sensor. So a decent chunk larger than the iPhone 13 Pro's 0 0.60 inch sensor and a hair larger than the S21 Ultra's 0.751 inch sensor. And that uses pixel binning of 9.8 micron sized pixels together to get the same 2.4 micron sized ones after. Now that old sensor in the Pixel 5, well, it was 0.39 inches. So they didn't just bump it up, they almost doubled it and put it on par with other flagships. And it combined with the Pixel's usual computational photography makes for some pretty impressive shots, frankly. And next we have the ultrawide, which is also the same between the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro. And that's a 12 megapixel, 114 degree field of view F2.2 with 1.25 micron size pixels compared to the one micron ones of the Pixel 5. And while not as impressive as the main, it, it does a pretty good job. My only gripe about it is that I feel like it's not wide enough. There just isn't a big enough difference in the field of view between it and the main camera. And with a downgrade in quality, albeit it's still good and I'm happy that it's there, I find myself just not wanting to switch to it as much as I would if it were wider. The Pixel 6 Pro has an added four times telephoto camera, which is absent here on the Pixel 6. 
You can still zoom in and get a digital one that isn't too bad, but it's it's not the same as the four times optical for sure. When I was using the Pixel 6 Pro, I found myself using the four times a lot because it's honestly pretty good. And I feel like that's probably gonna be the biggest thing I would miss switching to the Pixel 6 from the 6 Pro. Now, another difference is that the front camera is not capable of being as wide as the Pixel 6 Pros. And it is another thing I do like better about the 6 Pro, but I probably wouldn't miss it as much as I do that four times telephoto. Now for video, that's another place where that much smaller sensor of the previous pixels fell apart. These much more modern sensors do a much better job of video in general. But also Google claims now that because of the Tensor chip, their custom chipset inside the phone, they can actually use similar photo algorithms on their video by basically doing it to each frame up to 60 frames per second instantly. And you can be the judge of how well it looks based on all the video labeled as from the Pixel 6 in this video. Okay, now let's go get dinner. And this is a restaurant called La Dresse. And it means, well, address in French. The original location is north of here in Bryant Park, but this location just opened three months ago, serving some really good seafood pastas like lobster with black tonarelli pasta, which is like a thick square spaghetti-like pasta made from eggs. It's usually called spaghetti alla chitara. And if you've ever had cacio e pepe, you've had it, regardless of what you call it. It's so good. Okay, and finally, let's talk about some of the software features that kind of stand out to me. Firstly, the overall look and feel of Android 12 and Material U, which is the UI on top of Android that supposedly adjusts to you, and it does things like adjust the UI colors based on whatever wallpaper you have, etc., is great. Everything feels intuitive and snappy, and I like the minimalistic, very Google-looking style, personally. Next, we have Magic Eraser, which actually got a lot of attention from reviewers, and it allows you to erase distractions that the phone can automatically suggest and remove them with a tap. You can also circle things, and it'll try to remove those as well. And it actually does a pretty good job, considering how easy it is to use, and it's good for simpler edits. But for harder ones, I'll probably still use my go-to Snapseed on the phone. And people have apparently already ported this feature to other devices. So, so much for Google saying this feature was enabled by their Tensor chipset. Now, one software feature I actually missed more than any of the others, besides obviously the camera, is the new voice to text features. It is just so much more accurate than any other device I've ever used. And now it even adds punctuation based on how you're talking. So if you say a sentence that sounds like a question, it puts the question mark for you. You can even add emoji by saying that emoji. And it also stays active for a longer time. So you can easily dictate longer messages, even if you have some pauses, but also say things like clear to delete in those pauses or send to have it send without having to touch the phone screen. Honestly, it's great. Okay, let's head home and conclude our thoughts about this device. Okay, calling it a night. Now the phone's battery died while I was on the train on my way back. But here is my screen outside of my usage for anyone who's curious about that once I plugged it into a battery pack and was able to turn it back on and grab that. Honestly, I felt this way about the uh, 6 Pro as well as I do the Pixel 6. And I, the battery's okay. It's not great, it's not terrible, it's just meh. And the biggest disappointment in that is the fact that like the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 5a, especially the 5a, had incredible battery life. So kind of sucks to go from that to this. But you do obviously gain a ton by using this device over those. Now, while both of these phones, the Pixel 6 Pro and the Pixel 6, are really good deals when you talk about like the features for the price, this one in particular is a great deal. It is $599, and I don't think you can find another phone in that price range that's gonna even compete with this at all, frankly. The Pixel 6 Pro, on the other hand, is getting closer to a lot of those flagships. And the only real difference that I think I personally would miss more than anything is that telephoto lens. I use it a lot. But 
the question becomes, is that and the other little differences between the two worth the extra $300? As this is $5.99 and that's $8.99. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments below what you think of this phone, of that price difference, which one would you get? Um, and also, what you thought of the video? Always appreciate hearing from you guys, trying to improve this series as best I can. If you're not already, please subscribe and ding the bell next door to subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. And uh, I'll leave a link below to the best price that I could find on these devices. Also, thanks again to Rhino Shield for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out the link below and use coupon code UNLOCKER6 to get 10% off on top of their already up to 60% off Black Friday deals. But as always, thanks for watching. How many sirens can there possibly be at one time? Giant truck. Giant truck. Every time. Uh.